right, hello everybody. Welcome to another video tutorial training for buyers today. Um, I am Aaron Dalzell with the Dalzell Realty Group and today we're going to be going over page one of the residential purchase agreement. Uh, this is probably the, one of the more notorious and um, exciting pages because you're talking about financial terms and conditions. So we're going to go through this today. Like always, if you have any other questions regarding this, uh, you know, rewatch re it maybe once, twice, uh, a couple extra times. If not, always give us a call. We can help maybe clear up any anything that you're having trouble with on this. But um, just from the top, you know, some of the basics things you're going to see is is who the buyer is, um, what the property is, the parcel number, where it's located, and of course the purchase price here. Okay, and uh, as we start to go down through this, the financial terms and conditions, the first thing that we're going to come up against is the earnest money, or we call it the EMD. And what that is and what the purpose of it is, is the following. So um, when a seller is looking to secure a contract on their listing, they're going to want to see some type of good faith from the buyer that they're serious about going through with this contract. So typically what you're going to see for the earnest money is that 1% of the purchase price is pretty standard. So in this case, we're just going to run this whole purchase contract that an example of $500,000. So with that being said, is that if we bought this at 500,000 or our purchase price offer was 500,000, earnest money here is going to be $5,000. Now, where does that earnest money go? It's not going to the it's not going to the seller, it's not going to the brokerage. We're going to go ahead and select here that it's going to be wired and it's going to be going to an escrow holder. The escrow holder, the title company is going to hold on to that money as an assurance as both parties haven't breached the contract uh, and it's not they won't release it unless the conditions present themselves. And when might you get that EMD money back? Um, any type of due diligence issue that comes up or a contingency that you're exercising. And we'll get into those in another video. But today we're just going to go through the financial terms and conditions. So um, once we get there, let's just go ahead and uh, for our example, we'll kind of pencil in here. We'll put in a purchase price of 500000 Okay, so that's going to turn our earnest money into our earnest deposits going to be 5,000. So now as we work down this, any type of additional deposit you see here in uh, section B is going to be any type of extra money you put into escrow to go towards the purchase price. Typically you don't see a lot of here uh, items here, but we're going to want to make sure we fill out all these lines. So if we're not going to add any additional deposit, we may come in here and put in not applicable just so that everybody knows that we're not going to be putting in anything in here. Okay, now comes the probably the next two big sections is C and D, and it's going to be dependent on how we've structured this deal. So option C is going to be if we're going for a new loan. Option D is if that we're going to be assuming the loan that's already attached to the property. We are seeing some of these become more popular. Uh, maybe they've refinanced, they've gotten a better interest rate than you can currently get, uh, but we're obviously going to need to do our due diligence and make sure that the loan that is associated with the property now is assumable. So we're gonna to need to talk to the lender, talk to the listing agent, kind of find out what it is, who's got it, make some calls to make sure it even is assumable. Um, so for this case, we're gonna go ahead and just set this up as if we were selecting a new loan. So for this, this scenario, we're gonna go with the standard, uh, we're just gonna call it 10% down. So with that being said, we know that 10% is going to be 50,000 so that we're going to be looking to finance the balance, which is 450,000. Okay. And you might be thinking, okay, well, we've got 450 here and 5,000 here. That's only $455,000. Well, once we come down here, and put that we're going to go ahead and again we want to make sure everything is filled out we're going to put not applicable that we are not taking over and assuming any existing loans um, we're not we're also not going to do any type of promissory note or finance financing addendums that has anything to do with the deed of trust so we'll also come in here we'll drop in our na and this is where we're going to see the balance of that come in so we know we got to get to 500,000 as we've seen right up here we know we've got 5,000 coming from our earnest money we know we're financing the 450,000. So that math tells us that the balance of the purchase price that we're gonna have to come to with good, phone, good funds at the close of escrow is going to be 45,000. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 5,000, 
we're going to add it to our 450. We're going to add it to our 45 here. And what are we going to come up with? Our total purchase price. Again, we'll make sure all the math works together and we're matching up top for the 500,000. So this kind of walks you through that first page of what we're going to be looking at on the financial terms and conditions. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, a little easy to follow, but um, I like to go through this because there are a lot of options here and depending on how the deal is going to be structured, we've got some uh, decisions to make, but very standardly, this is how you're going to see a finance deal come together. Now, we could just go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And now let's just say this is going to be a cash purchase. So for those looking to do a cash purchase, we're still going to have our earnest money, right? And let's just still go with the fact that it is a 5,000 earnest money. So since we're not doing any of these additional deposits, we're not qualifying for a new loan. We're going to be paying cash. We're obviously not assuming a loan at this point. So again, we're not going to be doing any type of promissory note. So that gives us back down to our balance. So in the last example of financing, the, the balance of the purchase price that we're going to put here is going to be the remaining down payment. In the last case, it was 10% minus the 5,000 for EMD. Well, in this case, if we're paying cash, what's this number going to be? Well, this is going to be the balance of the purchase, which if we got 5,000 in earnest money, we're going to go ahead and put our 595 here. And then again, this will all work downwards so that we're matching $500,000 as our total purchase price and our $500,000 up top. So, so that takes us through pretty much the financing options and the cash buying options on page one of your residential purchase agreement. Also identifying the EMD. So uh, we'll get familiar with this. Make sure that you understand how the offer is written and uh, where all the finances are going. So, um, Thanks for checking this out. If you have any questions regarding this, uh, you know, I always recommend watching it two or three times. You know, you can slow it down, pause it, take some notes if you need to. But if nothing else, please always reach out to us. Give us a call. We'd be more than happy to walk you through it personally. And uh, make sure that everything makes sense as we go down this journey. This is page one of 12. So uh, it's uh, there, there's a lot to go over. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.